video today we're going to be doing a q a i got james here with me this is my husband if you don't know say hi <laughs> okay so today i asked for questions um just today i pulled for a few questions from you guys if you have for both of us i also didn't answer the questions from my last q a because i got sick and went back to work and i just didn't have time to film it all plus i wanted my questions to be pretty precise because there's a lot of things I need to explain and I just didn't want to be coming off rude or anything like that but I'm ready to answer a lot of those questions now and speak my mind on a few points that I have been staying silent on. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into the questions that we have for us and then I'll take over after that and answer the questions for me. Okay question number one. So how long have you guys been together? Do you remember? Yeah. How long? 12 years. <laughs> 12 years. We've been together for 12 years. Where did we meet? Uh, walking down the street. I'm going to link right here above. We actually did a husband tag Q&A. Um, it's kind of long, but we answered a lot of questions in that one. I'll link it here for you guys, but we're still going to answer a few. We met on the block over from our house. Yeah. How old are you guys? I am 27. 30. Um, tell us more about yourself. Is there an experience that changed you as a person? Kids. Definitely number one. I'll also link above here. I did uh, how becoming a mom changed me. I'll link that right here if you want to check that out. Are you guys ever going to make a family channel? Are you guys married? Uh, yeah, we are married. We've been married for a little over a year now. Wait, yeah, a little over a year, like a year and a half ish. Coming up on two years. Yeah. Um, as far as the family channel goes, we might in the future. Um, <laughs> the kids definitely have to just be on board if it's something they want to do. I don't want to make them participate in anything they don't want to. Savannah has mentioned wanted to take part in a few videos. So I might introduce those here vlog style with you guys. And, you know, if it's something that everybody's interested in, I could definitely uh, bring that onto the channel more. See how it goes from there. He's really busy at work all the time, so I just don't know how realistic it is to start a whole nother channel yet. What are your guys' guilty pleasures? Food, movies, music. Um, what are your guilty pleasures? This is me. No. <laughs> not appropriate. Um, no, I would say chocolate, cupcakes, those are mine. My Play video games? Food wise. I've been watching cartoons a lot lately too, so that's pretty sweet. I don't really watch a lot of TV, like at all. I'll put on a series maybe once every couple months and I'll watch it through. And then maybe like fast food. Yeah, definitely. Definitely fast food. We eat that more than I'd like to admit. Music. I don't know. I guess you can mention that. What, what's your favorite music that you would say? Um, I have a very broad music genre I don't listen to I listen to everything same here like from heavy metal to hardcore rap to pop I mean I don't like heavy metal but everything else is good um I would say when I'm in my best moods I probably put on like rap and country okay the next question is do you have do you and your hubby have any siblings nieces or nephews um, I have a sister and a brother, and I have two uh, siblings that are adopted out. And that's the only part of my family that I know as far as like, like that. I have like, um, like a cousin, but I don't speak with her. Never really met her. So that's all for me. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I got a lot of siblings. Like, we both have six, right? Yeah, I think it's like six. Um, that's good. I'm the oldest, but me too. My dad had different, like kids with different women, mm -hmm. so he was setting up franchises. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I got like a thousand cousins. It's, I can't. Yeah, his side of the you. family, like all the kids are. There's a lot of kids. There's like, just on the cousins. I think there's like fifteen or sixteen cousins or something. Um, but our kids are the youngest, or no? There, there's one other cousin below my youngest, so those are the three youngest kids in the family. What are some fun family things that you guys like to do together? Go to Baskin Robbins. I love Baskin Robbins. Um, 
Try their, if you go there, try their caramel macchiato ice cream. That's really good. Or Jamocha. We like to play board games sometimes. We do a lot of like, we have a lot of family events, like my side of the family, because we have several birthdays every month. Yeah. So we go to Birthday different parties. events all the time. Mm -hmm. And then uh, just random stuff. Holiday get togethers. Um, so our oldest daughter loves to play Monopoly, but we can't stand it because it takes so long to play. Um, Most board games start end in fights. Yeah. The kids arguing about, oh, you it's won, not fair. Blah, 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 blah. It's not fair. Jordan's favorite board game is Candyland. Yeah. Uh, we tried playing Twister. We got for Christmas. That one went okay. We like to do movies. We do watch movies. We have popcorn. Um, what else do we do? Sometimes we go places... Our schedule, if they permit, then we'll go places or if we have the funds. Um, mm -hmm. Something that I like to do with the kids is like we'll do where we, I I like to do once or twice a month where like I make sure I'm clipping their nails and stuff. So sometimes we'll paint them. They're getting into wanting to like sit with the hot pots with their feet in the warm water and stuff. Um, I'll take them to my friend's house to play with her kids. That's pretty much it. So this video might get long, but bear with me because a lot of people had questions and I just want to make sure I'm answering them because I actually set out for the first Q&A like a month ago. So it's just been a whirlwind this past month. So um, thanks for being patient. Okay, so what is the hardest thing about being a parent? Um, as far as that video that I told you I would link to about how becoming a mom changed me, I would say the number one thing still is that you're not a priority anymore. That's the hardest thing. Like doesn't matter what you want to do. I would say my biggest pet peeve with that about being a parent is that I can no longer nap when I want to. So I can't even remember the last time I tried to take a nap. The kids break everything. Yeah, they do. We just got this new kitchen table you guys seen in the videos and it's scratched. literally scratched. I mean, it doesn't even, I don't know. Jordan <laughs> broke a cup yesterday. She was in the bathroom. Yeah. I don't know how. But she did. Yes. Just no matter what, it's everything's broken. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> which is also a side note why you wonder why some things just aren't great around here. That's just because they mess them up. And it's not worth even fixing them because they're just going to break them again. Um, so next is my three favorite YouTubers. So I'm actually going to give you four. Because I'll say that these four were like the foundation for me as a person like I love them not just because I love the videos they make and their style and everything but I like them as people and they like really help shape me in some form or another so there's no specific order I'm just gonna say Kimmy from she's in her apron um, Jessica from Jessica Till Lindsay from Lindsay's life and style and Paige from Paige Danielle those are my four top favorite youtubers um, I've had their bell on for so long I follow all of them on Instagram um, I try to stay involved with their updates, things like that. So, I mean, I've seen other people, um, that I've watched kind of consistently over the last few years. It's just that those are the four people, like, I know their name, I know about their life, and, like, I love them. Um, do you use a lot of mousse or hairspray or heat in your hair? What do you and your man do for date night? Oh, I missed one. I use mousse when I do do it curly. Sometimes I use gel, but um, I prefer creams more so. And as far as heat, I straighten my hair one to two times per month, and I'll leave it for a couple days. So, not really big on heat. For date night, we go out to dinner, <laughs> and then uh, yeah, usually just chill. Sometimes yeah. I drink. Sometimes. I haven't drank though in like a year almost. Coming up on a year. But normally it's just nice to not have the kids. Yeah. I've gotten like a hotel room before and stuff like that. But Yeah, that's nice. Uh, having a hot tub and stuff. But for, like predominantly, I would say we probably get away like on an actual planned date like five times a year. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've said it in plenty of videos. It's like four or five times a year. And then that's it. I would say we we've been we've tried to go to the movies, but I hate going to the movies just because I don't want to waste the time staring at you know the movie. If I did something before, what is it that I used to do? 
So what did I, before I was a stay at home mom for the past year, I worked at a convenience store. I was just a cashier clerk and then I came home for a year and I'm actually back working now. So what do you get out of making YouTube videos? What would you tell a fellow stay at home mom who's considering doing the same? What's your setup like? Well, excuse me. I would say, what do I get out of it? It was just something that I've always wanted to do. The very first time that I wanted to start a YouTube channel was like back in 2011, probably when Shane Dawson was really big. If you don't know him, he started out with like skits and comedy and what have you. That's what I originally wanted to do, but I was just too chicken stuff to do it. And so now that my life is taking a different turn, I just decided to go ahead and do it. Originally, I started out with singing covers, but this is where it led me. So yeah, I just, I get the enjoyment out of making them. I really love to make them. It's like, uh, it took a lot to understand how to make them, what to use, what to do, like all those questions that you asked me after that. What would you tell a fellow stay-at-home mom who's considering doing the same? And what's your setup like? So I would say all of that is a part of doing YouTube because it takes a while to figure everything out. And the best thing I would say is just that you need to become adapted to research because it will be an endless thing. Because YouTube and the algorithm and style and setups, all that stuff is ever changing. So you really have to be willing to, uh, you know, to learn and adapt as you go. And that's the biggest thing, especially, you know, if you want to be successful here. And I'm very small and I still have a lot to do, but I've grown a lot and I'm very appreciative of that. And so that is what I get out of it. It's just the enjoyment. I love to keep going. I love like the chase and the drive of getting the video done and then posting it and having people enjoy it. And I really love it. Um, I do record on my phone. I have some lights that I use and set up sometimes, but the number one thing that I would just try to do is use the daylight. That's your best bet. And it doesn't have to be expensive either. If you, you can start with whatever you have. That's literally what I do. Um, and then as far as, I would just say, make sure it's something that you want to do. You need to really YouTube and see, you know, what is it that you need to start a YouTube channel, how to do it, what to use. Um, you know, and then on top of that is next to YouTube, are you willing to put yourself out there on other social media platforms? How much are you willing to share with people? Um, can you, can you intake both the negative and the positive feedback that you are going to encounter? There's a lot that's going to go into it. And I feel like you should look up a lot of videos and really see and decide if it's something you want to do. Um, because sometimes when it gets hard, if it's not something that you really love, you might find that it's more stressful than more enjoyment. So just be sure before you jump into, you know, something so time consuming and then, you know, feel defeated or heartbroken over it. Will I add in vlogs to my channel? So yeah, like I was saying with James is, um, it will come in the future most likely, but it's just that right now I have no idea when. Um, it will kind of just depend on our scheduling and then, you know, whatever we have to share. We don't do much is the thing. So I just can't see us sharing our day to day life over and over because we just don't, we just really aren't that interesting with people. We just, you know, kind of go about our day. So unless we're really like doing something, I don't have enough content to share with people to where it could be like a whole separate channel. Are you planning on any more kids? And I love your channel. Thank you so much. Um, no, we actually are not having any more children. I did get my tubes tied. How do you manage having time for being consistent on YouTube, your kids, your husband, and self-care? I struggle with juggling everything from time to time. So yeah, I definitely struggle with juggling everything, as anybody could clearly see here. Um, there's been a lot of open advice here in my comments section in my videos because um, my very first video from this year I would say it was my second cleaning video from this year is the one that kind of blew up and went viral and then next to uh, before that one though prior um, it got a lot of views now but initially it didn't and that one was actually the aftermath of me becoming a true youtuber so 
I was spending pretty much every waking moment that I had extra next to caring for the kids and breathing on understanding, uploading and editing and filming YouTube videos for like almost every day. And so that, that really was the aftermath because I really put like cleaning on the back burner while I invested time into YouTube. So spending time with the kids and James and what have you was really just more the top. And so cleaning is just pretty much dead last. And so now that I'm working again, we are um, coming up with a little bit more of a schedule so that he can help me a little bit more too. And we're trying to get the kids more involved as well because once summer gets here, I'm definitely going to need you know them to be more on board so that it's not a madhouse. And as far as self-care, it's just like whenever I get a moment. I feel like a lot of people spend a lot of time on Facebook and social media and watching movies you know, and doing all that stuff when they could be doing something else. So I just, as far as like self care, it would just be me not watching anything. Cause I, I just don't watch TV. Like I said, I do series every couple of months and I'll binge watch that series. And then I won't watch anything for a while, except for like, you know, YouTube videos. So that's really how I find time is I just shut down in other areas and you just have to, you know, decide on what it is that you want to put your effort into and what you don't. And then I believe you said before you embrace the mess. What happens between the times you clean your house? What's your secret for that? I try to remember that the mess won't always be there. Kids will grow up one day and I'm going to miss it. But sometimes the mess makes me nervous. I would love to watch my kids play and not worry about them and their mess. And so I would say that's one of the huge things. And that was really one of the turning points for me. I wouldn't say I've always been a super clean, neat freak. But I, I have always had my like... You know, everybody has their little way of doing things. And so before when I would keep the house, I always had my little little nit nitpick items here and there that like would just kick me off if they were out of place or if somebody didn't rinse a plate or something like that. And so I found myself more than one occasion wanting to blow up on my kids for them making a mess. And the hardest part for me to wrap my head around understanding was the fact that nine times out of 10, they were making that mess while I was doing something else. And then I was getting mad and somehow wanting to punish them for occupying themselves while I was busy. And so I thought that was barbaric, to be honest, because me growing up, I never had to worry about mess. I didn't have any um, chores to be responsible for or anything like that. So I just took care of myself and my things once I got old enough. And you know, that was personal choice. I would say that James, where are you at? <laughs> Huh? Oh, James too. When he grew up, they didn't. Um, it was just, it was just him and his mom, and they didn't really have big messes to worry about. Um, he wasn't responsible for cleaning up anything. In my room? Huh? Like what? I don't know. What? The house wasn't as bad when we had one kid too. Yeah. Like once Jordan came along, it was a whole different animal. Yeah. She's a beast. It just became like <laughs> from just a little bit of stuff going on to just complete disaster. Yeah, definitely. And as far as like dealing with it, who, who cares? If it's not like in my way, if we got towels, we got dishes to eat, I mean, it's not. If there's toys all over, it doesn't really matter. There's just toys. Yeah. You're going to pick them up and. Not even, like, Savannah cleaned her room, I think, yesterday or the day before. Like, she cleaned the room. Before the day was done, it looked the same as before she cleaned it. So, what's the point? Yeah. Cleaning it all and, the time. And I understand people's point of view when they say they that we need to teach our kids to clean up and stuff like that. However, like, when I did have one child, that is what I did. I drove myself crazy every single night making sure everything was clean in her toys. And Savannah, my oldest one, she would. She would help me clean up her books every night. She would help me pick up some toys, you know, do the regular things. Um, she wouldn't get into her clothes and things like that. And it was a lot easier. And so once I had two to worry about, it was just a, it was just a madhouse. And my, my older daughter just didn't see it fair. And she didn't understand why the other one wasn't doing anything. And, you know, I was like, okay, well... I shouldn't have to have her clean all this mess, so I'm just going to do it. And it was never a big deal because I always did make sure that the things were cleaned up. So having these huge messes, yes, they do tick me off, okay, because we have a lot of stuff. However, I don't expect her to clean up everything. So 
it was just me driving myself crazy and so it's basically having almost the same mess if you just wait and now that's not to say you have to wait a month or a week or two weeks but sometimes you just don't need to clean it up every day and maybe you can be doing something else and I don't want to say this to, to I don't want to step on anybody you know I really don't because everybody lives their own life just as much as most people don't understand what's going on in our life I have no idea what's going on in some of your guys' life because I'm not there with you and you know you're not on video so I would say a lot of times when I could be spending um, a lot of time keeping the house perfectly honestly I, I probably would just be sitting with James and I feel like a lot of relationships do suffer over the house um, you know, we used to fight a lot more when I would be nitpicking about something that he didn't do or something that he wanted done. And so now, you know, we've been together so long, we're just in an agreement that we don't care about these things anymore. Unless we're going to get a divorce, there's no use of even bringing it up. And so that's pretty much how we live our life now, unless it's something that we actually need. Now, yes, you do see me sweep up a lot of stuff in this house. We don't have carpet, so things aren't getting stuck in our rugs and in our carpet. Um, we don't have a strict rule of only eating at the table. The kids do have crumbs. Um, there's just a bunch of random things. But even if I sweep every day, which I pretty much almost sweep every night in some areas here in the living room and kitchen, it's just that that mess is there. That's not sitting there forever. When they're dropping, if they drop crumbs or like they have Play-Doh, like I'm literally not leaving that there for a month at a time. Okay, um, so the house just isn't dirty how people think it is. It's just messy. There's just stuff that's everywhere, but it's not dirty to the point where like we're living in filth until we're ready to clean. That's not that's not what I'm sharing. That's not the concept that I want to put out there to people. It's just the big things. We are cleaning up the messes as we go. A lot of times um, if I'm and I also don't do the dishes as I go. That's another thing. When you see my sink and you think we're living in filth, I don't do the dishes as we go. Um, so I will do them once a day or once every other day and that's it. So by the time I'm done from the morning to the night, I could have a whole sink full of dishes even though I just cleaned the kitchen. Now that's unpopular to most people's beliefs, but I just hate doing dishes. I hate hand washing dishes. I only hand wash my pans. And for, you know, um, a lot of other people won't understand this. I know that. But there was a time when I used to worry heavily years ago about not having money for dish tabs. So I became, I, I got this survival thing instilled in me that I want the dishwasher to be filled up and ready to go before I use a new dishwashing tablet. I don't know how crazy that is. It just seems so silly to waste uh, a whole dish tablet, tablet on like six items when I can fill it and wash a whole load. And that's the same thing with the laundry. Like in my head, I just can't wrap myself around wasting a whole, you know, servings worth of soap for just a couple things. Um, and it's just something I haven't been able to get out of the habit of. And call me frugal, call me cheap, but call me gross, I guess, but that's just how it is. So that was a really, really long one, but that's a good explanation on that one. So as far, um, somebody said, tell us about your remodeling and are you going to finish the kitchen? Do you plan on doing the gray flooring throughout the house? And what other projects around the house you have planned? So, for me personally, James doesn't care about the houses or the floors. He pretty much just wants carpet in the rooms. I, however, would love to have the gray flooring that's in our kitchen throughout the entire house except the bathroom. However, um, he doesn't want to do it in those, in those areas. So, we need to save up so that we can pay for both the materials and the labor for that. Where's this weight? Ha ha ha. Okay. He doesn't want to pay for it. So he is telling me that I should pay for it. Yes, we do share money, but this is not a venture that he wants to undergo after this whole kitchen because we've been dealing with this kitchen for a couple of years, as some of you might know. It was all done by us. Yeah, so he pretty much did the majority of everything in here, so he doesn't want to deal with it. <laughs> but I too, however, hate that the floors are all different colors all over the house. We don't have any other projects planned other than just like, you know, some furniture things. And the main project that I have planned is to decorate the walls. Um, anything that you see is pretty much the only things that we've had. This is our fifth year here. And this is only actually my first year putting things up in the house that you've seen me put up in videos or when I'm decorating. Because prior to that, we just weren't decorating. And the only thing that we did do was we did the crazy paint because we were just sick of living in a bland space. So a lot of people keep telling me to paint things white and paint things gray, 
But in our small house where we just don't have a lot of fancy things, we just love having the bright colors. And if you look up any color psychology, you will see that um, the colors we chose kind of correlate with how to have a good mood when you walk into a space that you might not otherwise be completely in love with. So, what do you need? What are you getting? What are you getting? Uh, Go ahead, grab it. Okay. okay. Oops. Did you want to add to that? Oh, yeah. All our colors are funky because before I worked a really crappy job and just worked a lot of hours and it was really depressing. And I'd come home to our super bored colors and now everything's just bright and happy. Yeah. You know? And it was... I mean, we both agreed on it, but we started to, like, I was like, hey, we need to do something to this house because it's just, yeah. it's plain and I don't like it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I want to say that, when I, let me just say this, let me go backtrack real quick. When somebody said about starting a YouTube channel, now, originally, before I uploaded like my first lifestyle type of video, I wanted to make a video about coming home with the kids. Now, I wouldn't say I ever worked through like a real full-time job where I was super stressed out all the time, but I am 27, so I graduated high school, had my daughter, started college, then I got pregnant, wasn't able to finish, and I kind of did some jobs here and there. And then I went to work for a few years and he was working multiple hours, 50, 60 hours a week and applying, applying, applying at multiple, multiple jobs. So I had this idea in my head that I really wanted to showcase like our journey coming out of like a very low kind of like poor quality of like life situation, like on the rise. And so I really wanted to do it to give people hope who do not have a lot of money who do struggle to do things and get by. Because I thought it would be inspirational, but I didn't want to step on people's toes. And I thought that people wouldn't enjoy that content or understand that story. So I didn't say it. Now, so that is why I have enjoyed heavily that so many people are, you know, responding positively to our small house and our crazy colors and things that we're doing. I have fishing finished kitchen half finished kitchen because now um he does make a decent wage you know he works good hours i'm working like i have a youtube channel things are better for us now but you know we still have responsibilities that we need to take care of so there are things that i would like to do to the house don't get me wrong okay i see some of those homes that with the gray walls i love it absolutely love it and one day i have decided i would like to put this color that you see behind me over that orange but I'm not ready to part with it yet because we've only had it a couple years and like I really do still love that color. However, I fully understand and I don't say this to step on anybody's toes who are in that situation or my friend's home who I've seen who I've complimented on who have that. It's just that I do understand what people are saying when they say that something isn't real life or you know, that's not realistic or they can't relate or that makes them feel like shit to watch videos where, you know, you're not talking about a struggle. You're not talking about anything going on. You're just saying that something is mom life. And then you have like all the decor that you would see, like in the YouTube videos that you watch and in the magazines. And when you get all those special offer deals from Victoria's Secret and your text messaging and like you're seeing those women wearing those items, like. I understand to be in that situation where you're you have all this intake coming in from the world and then you go to a video to somebody that you like and you watch their video and you love their content but like you do feel shitty and it's not that you and I don't want to say that because it's not to say that like you don't appreciate what you have or maybe that you really do wish you had something else it's just that it's so easily in the world that we live in today to be um What's the word I'm looking for here? Put down? Yeah. To feel like put down or like to feel low or something like that. Especially if you're already in a situation where, for me, I was drawn to lifestyle channels, motherhood channels, cleaning videos because that's something I was struggling with. I wasn't watching those channels because I wanted to go see their decor and things like that. That's why I told you about those four ladies I told you about because they were help shaping my mindset into something else, you know? Um... 
in previous videos I talked about how I love watching female influencers online because I don't have a lot of positive influence in my life particularly as far as like family on my side so they have helped bring me out of you know funks that I've been in or like bouts of depression and stuff over the last like five years so I understand how people can feel when they're going to channels and maybe looking for motivation or help or just see how somebody else does it or man I really couldn't afford all the groceries I needed this week but let's see what so and so is doing despite not being able to do that I mean I don't want to make it too heavy or make it seem weird because I don't know how you guys are gonna interpret this information that I'm giving to you right now however yes I would love to do more things to our home but we're in no rush because we do appreciate what we have we do like this house but yes if we were handed a million dollars hell yeah we would probably move and never look back <laughs> however you know, it's not like a huge goal of ours where we're like, oh man, we got to do this, that, and the other because of this, that, and the other. Like, we really don't care. We're just, even when, like, I literally have the decor picked out for the entire house and I've had it picked out for over a year. It's just a matter of costs. Um, you know, I'm not one of those women who likes to redecorate, you know, over and over and over again. I like the holiday things, but like there's the, there's decor pieces that I have picked out that I want to put up just so that this is a home because this is our house we live here this is our permanent address and you know we want to be happy in our space because we have to be here for all of our life while we're not at work so yes i understand that was a long rant huh yes so yeah she likes changing the floor <laughs> i'm gonna insert uh the link right here if you want to watch the video of us tearing up the it's the original floor? Wait, did we tear up the original floor? No. The kitchen floor has been changed like three times. Okay, so we there. tore up the kitchen floor like in the summer last year. I'm going to insert a video of us doing that if you want to watch that. That was fun. Okay, so what's my favorite type of video to make? What made you want to do YouTube? Okay, so my favorite type of videos to make are like um, the cleaning videos. I love transformational videos. I love informational videos. So number one, as far as editing wise, because I love to edit and, you know, do the fancy things that I can, uh, would be cleaning videos. But next to that are any kind of transformational video, um, um, things that I love. So I love cleaning. I love the weight loss. Those are the two things I could probably be obsessed and get lost in till I die. <laughs> like it doesn't matter how many, how many transformations, weight loss transformations I've seen. I could literally watch a new one every day and be just as amazed by it and take away just as much inspiration by it. I don't know what it is, but that would be that. So what made me want to do YouTube? Yeah, you know, I was just in a lonely place and it was just something I wanted to do. If you've seen where I chopped my hair off, I was going through like this whole transitional year last year. I spoke about that a lot too in my first video of this year actually. Um, and so I just went for it. What is your favorite and least favorite part of being on YouTube? So my favorite part about being on YouTube is seeing that other women are reacting positively to my situation. I love that because there's a lot of the same on YouTube. Yes, everybody's an individual. Everybody has their own story. But I like that people are reacting positively to me. And so that makes me want to keep going. I love you. Uh, my least favorite part would be trolls, as most people who are YouTubers who have to encounter trolls. Um, only because a lot of things they're trolling on aren't things that are like... There's some pretty toxic people. They're like, oh, I got 17 kids and my house never looked like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I mean, that's cool. But I mean, there's probably still lots of things that they don't do that I think is bombar bombaric. Bombaric? What is it? Yeah. <laughs> there's probably lots of things that I do that um, that they don't and I probably find that to be crazy and taboo as well so that's crazy just people not being open minded to different walks of life and you know also to add in there is that my husband is in fact not lazy he works very hard to provide for our family he you know is home for a whole year and he handled all the financial responsibilities that we have um, right down to the groceries and you know our medical payments everything so <clears throat> like working 50 60 40 to 60 hours a week is not easy for anybody on top of you know having a family to you know carry 
Last so. year I worked 1,100 hours of overtime, which is an additional <clears throat> half a year of what a normal person works. Yeah. So. Um, a lot of people are saying like, oh, well, your husband should still help you because you're at home and that's still a job and yada, yada. And I just want to say that like, <clears throat> look, we've been together for a long time, 12 years. Ask her how many times she's cut the grass in that 12 years. I have cut the grass in that 12 years, but not probably enough time to count on both hands. Um, she might have cut a piece <clears throat> with some scissors. Hardy hard. But seriously. Yeah. It's not, it's not, we, we're not in the nick, we're past the nick picking stage of, you know, who's going to do what and yada yada. Now, if I'm in a spot where like I'm crying, I'm throwing my hands in the air and I'm just done then it's just going to be what it is. He's not going to worry about it. If he's going to want it done, then he's going to do it. Or he's just not going to do it. Same thing. You know, and as far as like me, like I don't ask him to like do my laundry, cook food, all those things because he's already doing enough stuff. Yes. Now, if you're walking around keeping your spotless home and you know, you're picking up everything that falls on the ground and then at the end of the night, you're like, wow, I don't even have five minutes for myself and I'm going to lose my shit then yes, you're going to want help. But guess what? You're either going to ask for help and you're going to make it a huge deal from your significant other or you're just going to let something go. And the worst thing that you can just let go is your relationship. So if you're in a space where you can't decide, <laughs> where you can't decide on, you know, how to keep going about your day because, you know, you're, you're driving yourself insane. And this can be with anything. You, then you got to decide what you're going to start slacking on. That might be friends. That might be TV. That might be cleaning. That might be games. That might be, you know, that weekly date with your friend. They're just, they're, there has to be some sort of compromise for you and say, you know, I'm just not going to do it anymore. See how it goes. And I mean, you might end up finding out that, okay, somebody might walk in your door and judge you a little bit, but maybe you're going to be happier at the end of the week. And that's that. And another thing is just that we don't have a bunch of people walking in our home at the end of the week or at all. Um, our so brother. Yeah, that's up for today. <laughs> but our brother and sister come here and that's it. And I mean, they'll stay for a little while. Sometimes they might stay the night. But any other time that we get company is literally somebody popping in for 10 minutes and dipping out. Like we don't have company. We don't have friends come over. We don't host. None of those things. So if people do come here, when they do, our home is clean. Like, there's nothing that's going to be crazy. And the people that do come to our home aren't judging us like that. So, yeah. we're not worried about that. I mean, yeah. My mom literally has so much stuff. Her garage is full of stuff. Her basement. His is. mom is the hoarder and we that you guys are calling some me. Of her stuff in our basement. <laughs> yeah, some of her things like are in our so basement. Yeah. <laughs> so. so. Oh, yeah, there's a couple more. How long does it take for the house to get messy before you do a video? A day. Yes. So my ordinary schedule that I try to follow is cleaning once a week. Um, sometimes that ends up being four days. Within four days, I could probably make another video. Just depends on what it is. If it's going to be a whole house or, you know, whatever. But I do clean, deep clean once a week. Oh, here's a funny one. So if you guys could eat... If you guys could only eat one cookie for the rest of your lives, which cookie would it be and why? <laughs> oh. I don't really like cookies. I would pick chocolate chip cookie. Hands down. Probably. Or peanut butter. Probably peanut butter. Peanut Probably butter? not because it gives me heartburn. Yeah, peanut butter. So yeah, some soft chocolate chip cookies. You know what's really good? Here in Michigan, we have what's called Melting Moments Ice Cream. Does a brookie count? What's that? Exactly. <laughs> anyway, so it's like two chocolate chip cookies with ice cream in the middle, and that would actually be the cookie that I would want to eat for the rest of my life. <laughs> because it's delicious. It's a seven. I feel, I feel like this is a um, trick question. Is the cookie a metaphor for something? <laughs> oh my god. What are your jobs? Are you planning on buying a bigger house? What are your plans for the future? So yeah, I work at a convenience store. I'm a cashier and a clerk, and I'm a YouTuber. Still work for the same power company, as Last I mentioned in another video. Mm -hmm. um, I did take a different, a different job now. I map like gas lines and stuff like that. So. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, do you want to, do you plan on buying a bigger house? Do I? No. Yeah, I mean, just from a, the standpoint of being financially smart, it would be best to, what I like to refer to as die in this house. <laughs> um, it would be best to just live here because eventually we're going to pay off our home. The only thing that would like make me want to move is if our neighborhood went downhill, which I mean. Yeah, we don't live in an unsafe neighborhood, but it's not, you know, it's not top notch. It's not like, I don't know, I don't know which neighborhood that everybody would know, but. Yeah. It's not Malibu, obviously, but, <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. it's just a normal city. We live in a normal neighborhood. Um, some people say it's ghetto. <laughs> yeah, some people do say it's ghetto. But we have seen some ghettos, and it's really not. But I've seen some ghettos. Um, but, yeah, that would be the only thing that would make us want to move is if our area became more compromised and we just didn't feel safe. But we do, and, you know, just seems right. What are your plans for the future? <clears throat> What are your plans for the future? Work, eat, sleep. Repeat. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully go on a vacation. Then. And that, we've never been on like a real vacation. Nope. So. That's definitely in the future. We want vacations. Hopefully we can work that Plural. into our Plural. <laughs> like taking one to two like vacations a year would be ultimately a good goal. Um, you know, we have two kids. Um, we are on the path to owning our house. Um, can't have any more kids. And, yeah. Yeah, somebody asked that too. What? If we ever gonna have any more kids. Oh yeah, no, because my tubes are tied. So yeah, I mean, as far as like those big goals, those are pretty much all underway. It's just a matter of like, more goals would just be, you know, just experiences. Um, obviously the ability to give the kids more experiences, um, saving money, learning, getting, uh, into shape, being healthy. I would love to get to a point where we are eating more organic foods. I know that sounds cliche, like, oh, you want to eat organic, but no, seriously, uh, <laughs> food is important and, you know, I'll probably always stick to like having Raymond noodles every once in a blue moon because they're good. Let's not lie, but disgusting. We need to eat more fruits and vegetables from this earth. So that would be good. I always like to just say that when we, if we have the necessities and we're able to afford, you know, some luxuries on the side, then we should be set. I don't have huge expectations um, out of life in general, so long as we're able to get the things that we need. And that's what sets my heart into stone is that what we are able to provide what we need and not just what we need but like you know right down to every last thing that we need you know what i mean like a sheet of toilet paper <laughs> and we've been i mean it's been a long road like long. We, when we were together i've made minimum wage when we had savannah i was unemployed yeah our oldest like, daughter. i was on unemployment i mean i got a minimum wage job mm -hmm. it's just been a slow progression i mean if anybody's in that situation don't just think it's shit yeah. Just, you gotta just keep working towards your goal. Yeah. And it'll, I mean, you'll hit it eventually. And just be fortunate for what you have along the way, too. You know, um, for the longest time, you know, uh, when Savannah was born, she's eight now, by the way. She'll be nine after summer. Um, when she was born, we were on government assistance, uh, you know, food stamps. food stamps. We had our medical insurance through our state. Yeah. I, I don't I don't even know if I had medical insurance at the time. I might have had through it his through my work. mom. Yeah. Because I didn't have it through my work at that time. And like during that time, my biggest goal was just to get to a place where we could financially afford to feed ourselves and our family and not have it be like compromising any bills that we had. And then, you know, once we got to that place, it was, hey, well, I would really love to be able to get a full tank of gas because for the longest time I would... Oh, I could only work with 20 bucks a week in my tank and it had to be for what we had to do. You know, we couldn't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, people are very small minded when it comes to what people are doing. Like people have said to us like, oh, well, your kids have all those toys. Well, let me tell you, a lot of those toys are gifts because for the longest time we didn't get them a lot of things that you would see like in the catalogs and things like that. Their first few Christmases coming up. And so, um, you know, don't think just because you see something that, you know, we've purchased it. <laughs> His <laughs> mom, Savannah's in particular, Christmas was just I don't, I don't know. It, it was, was it was. Let, 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 our budget was so 
Ridiculous. It was one hundred dollars. That's what it was, and we were struggling to get that one hundred dollars yeah. together for her first Christmas. Okay, and my dad retired from a uh, Ford. Ford. Okay, and so um, if you listen to my story, if you were watching the older videos, he adopted me basically when I was twelve, and so he always made sure I had what I needed, and if I needed money, he gave it to me. Um, his mom is in a very good position. She provides well for herself, and she always does very um she's very generous to us during the holidays myself included um life in general her and her dad they helped us out a lot a lot like, making it through our to get to where we are now our crappy positions <laughs> <laughs> so um don't jump the gun and think you know like our kids are spoiled and things like that you know what if they're spoiled I'm going to let it be because there's so many things that we haven't been able to give them, especially up until now. And who knows if we ever will that it's okay that they had too many toys. They played with them. I swear to you, they play with all of them because that last video, whatever they didn't play with, it literally went into the trash. Mm -hmm. So if you see it on the floor now, it's because they pulled it out because I definitely don't go in there. <laughs> so yeah. Um, let's see. Let's see the last couple ones here that came in some new ones. Oh, and none of the videos are staged. They're, no. It's it's organic. <sighs> it just turns into a disaster. Uh -huh. I mean, I don't know. I do not clean as I go, guys. I just really don't. I never have. I've always been horrible at it. I, I didn't grow up in a household where I seen, like, my mom and whoever cleaning up and doing whatever like I just didn't have my mom around growing up and once I finally did get into a stable position like I moved around quite a bit up until when I was like 11 and then I moved in with my dad when I was 12 and he was just an older gentleman like older like 60 and you know he didn't really have a care at that point for much so if I he didn't um you know require me to do anything you know, I made sure I kept myself. I was really organized. I was probably OCD back then. I liked to line my shoes up and have my clothes, like, color coordinated and all kinds of crazy shit, you know? And so, now, I just, I don't care. It's just not important. I just don't. And that's why I'm so crazy. But that's also why I'm very tedious and, what's the word? Meticulous? Meticulous? What's the damn word? Meticulous. Meticulous. When it comes to small details when I am cleaning because people are like, well, hey, you wiped that microwave out six times last week. Well, when I clean it, I like to make sure that it's clean. I'm hitting, I'm moving everything and, you know, because I know I didn't clean all week. Why don't your kids clean their room? That's the last one. They do. We're going to end it with that one. So, yeah, the kids do clean their room, actually, um, even though most people wouldn't think they do. Now, I just want to say this because everybody who has said this has also been in the same mindset of people who have said oh my gosh how do you do that I could never live like that or I'm OCD I couldn't handle that or I do this that and the other so my house wouldn't get that way and I don't mean this to be very rude but some people have also been condescending toward me to me just to say that I do do it and I'm sorry. And a lot of people couldn't handle it. And I understand if you think that I'm struggling or if I have issues that I'm able to manage that, but it's just something that gets done. And for some reason, there's this weird little tweak in my heart that when I clean all day and break a sweat with my music blaring for 10 hours a day, somehow it brings me joy at the end of the day that it's done and I don't have to worry about it again for a while. I don't know, but I just hate when people say like I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it I couldn't manage it. I can't deal with it and then here I am doing it and you're just like wow. Why would you do that? <laughs> I mean, I don't know when we did the basement it was like just watching like after you know everything was done It was super cool. I mean like because everything was just out of the way and organized You know, mm -hmm. I mean it's still organized the kids are playing in sand right now So that's all over the place you know, mm -hmm. it's just yeah, and everything in our house does have a home. Uh, I mean, we got rid of a lot of stuff in all of our decluttering videos, but I mean, we do have a home for everything. Um, nine times out of ten, we can find what we're looking for, unless it's my husband's wallet, because he never knows where that is. <laughs> or her mic that I bought her. Yeah, I have to find that. The kids probably stole that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, looking around, I don't know, guys. I don't know. They do clean their room, though, I promise you, but... Just to go along with what I was saying is just that I most of most people here that are commenting that 
couldn't fathom cleaning up the mess that I just did. So how can I expect my eight and four year old to do that? Especially in a way that would be acceptable in my eyes because you guys have seen how I clean and there's no way I could expect that from my eight year old. I don't care how old she is or you know how soon your your kid you know they were doing their laundry at two it's just a simple thing that i couldn't expect them to manage the amount of mess that you know happens but every day literally we do tell them to clean up something clean up something spend some time picking up like some man folded two loads of towels yesterday yeah she cleaned the room they do fold and within towels. hours the room looked as if it wasn't even touched yep and Jordan put all the clothes, like baby clothes, oh. every, every kind of clothes that, were, that was in that room that was dirty, she put them down the chute. I don't care if they were doll clothes, whatever. If they're on the floor, they need to go down the chute. Yep. But they, it's just still, they pull That's more Jordan's stuff task. out, they play with their toys, and it's awesome that they're creative. Like, yeah. I played with Legos as a kid. That was my thing. That's what I love to do. I built Legos all day long. Mm -hmm. My parents would be pissed. Yeah. they'd step on Legos but <laughs> I mean that, at that point that's when I'd say you need to clean your room but other than that they, they didn't really care they didn't go in there they didn't have to live in there it wasn't their room yeah I mean, and people always too they bash like the cleaning videos that I've done about our bedroom and like say that should be our spot and a place for us to relax and do that I'm like we don't relax in there <laughs> we do not relax in there have you seen the size of that room anyway yeah. like we don't want to sit in there like we have it set up to where it's organized we can get our things obviously it was really really messy in that video you've seen because i didn't clean those rooms for a month as i stated when i very first started youtube however when we do relax here at home we like to sit on our big ass couch <laughs> you know it took us a long time to be able to buy our first couch and like it fits us both on it so that's where we chill it fits like a lot all, of, like, all the whole family um, we can sit on it's there a big couch we don't like to relax in our room. they can still sit on there. it's nice just yeah i don't know um and so i hate when people say that that's one of the things i don't like when they're like hey you're supposed to relax in there it's like no we go in there to pass out so we can get up and handle what we need to do the next day it's not all we do in there <laughs> but seriously though um they do help they do have their chores um they would help more with dishes i'm just not ready to let them help you. I don't like the our stair positioning that I don't want them to like fall putting things in the corner cabinet. Oh my gosh. You did? did? Uh huh. Um Okay. There's just certain things too that like you know, me growing up, I was never required to do. So I don't feel like it's gonna be an issue for them when they're growing up. They're gonna understand what they need to do. And when they're teenagers too, they're definitely gonna have a lot more responsibility. Just right now, you know, with things I just like things so. Everybody has how they like things just so. And that's how I am, you know. Jordan, my youngest daughter too, I can perfectly align her laundry into her dresser and within, by the end of the night, the clothes will be messed up because she changes her clothes like four or five times a day. <laughs> and sometimes, yes, I do put those clothes right back in the dresser because they're clean. They're clean. And no, I do not just put their clothes, throw them in there if they've been sitting out. Those are baby doll clothes, what most of you guys see. I do wash those baby doll clothes. I promise you, they go in the wash at least once or twice a month. And then if it's something that needs washing as needed, then I throw it in. So <clears throat> this was an extremely long video, but I feel like I covered so much that I just haven't spoke on. There's so many things that I just didn't say. And I wanted to make sure I clearly got my point and like the things I wanted to say across because I don't want to be rude. I want you guys to see me I don't want to give you fake answers and you know I just I just wanted this to be intimate um, and I'm just glad I did it it's I will say it took me extremely long time to do this the first week or two I just had to muster up the courage to answer some of these because I did want to make sure I you know also spoke because people speak a lot to me in the comment section <laughs> but so I'm glad I got it Got it done. What are you doing? <clears throat> okay. So I hope you enjoyed watching this q and I hope your question got answered. If you have more questions, make sure that you follow me on Instagram and um, keep your eyes peeled for my community tab. That's where I usually post for a QA. and a And if you have any other questions, you can post them down below here and I'll be sure to write them down for the next one. Uh, I do have a giveaway coming up soon. I just haven't decided on what it's going to be. It is going to be for the 10K video, even though it's kind of <clears throat> been surpassed already. But I am still going to do the 10K giveaway. So, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope that 
um, you guys got to know me and my husband a little bit better and understand, you know, our situation a little bit more. Um, also, if you have any questions or you need to speak with me about anything else, you can always message me on Instagram over there. Um, and I'd love to chat with you. So thanks for being part of our family here. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe.